In this video, we'll have a look at detailed design of software. Previously, we looked at detailed design of hardware, but software in many ways is just as important. We need to design it carefully, and software is not just something that you do as an afterthought and hack it together afterwards, but software is something that needs to actually uh, interact with the hardware and actually perform its required tasks. Um, here's an uh, interesting little comic that outlines some of the importance of software requirements. Um, we can't just stop at our hardware requirements and say, oh, yep, we've developed the hardware requirements, it's all good. Software requirements are equally as important. And the software designer isn't a mind reader and doesn't understand intrinsically what we want and need. We need to actually tell them what we want and need. Well, remember, remember earlier on we looked at the chaos report and that showed us some major problems with the software design process. So uh, over 30% of IT projects cancel before they're finished for one reason or another. 52% uh, of projects will cost almost 200% of their estimated cost. So there's a massive estimation issue there that projects are having massive cost overruns. And only 16.2% will be completed on time and on budget. So the small minority of projects will actually be completed uh, as they were quoted, which is a significant concern. It's been said previously, failure is not an option, it comes bundled with software. Well, it's a bit of a light hard look, but it really outlines to us that software design isn't easy. It shouldn't be full of us an afterthought. Oh, we've designed all the hardware, let's just knock together the software and yeah, then it will all be fine. Software development is an important process. There's large risks involved and they necessitate structured system design processes. It's true that often software will be easier to fix than hardware because we don't have to re-machine something or something like that. And it's often that it can be user upgrade as a, a software upgrade or a firmware upgrade that we can push out to customers. So there are some things that are a bit easier in the software process to upgrade and add extra features along the way. But we need to actually design it properly and we need to design it so that it can be upgraded if that's one of our key features and something that we actually want to do. So what do we actually make out of all this? Well, we need to approach it in a similar sort of way that we would our hardware design. So our software design will include design elements to it. It'll include tests and deployment and maintenance procedures, the sort of validation procedures that we'd have in our hardware design as well. But at the back end, it will also have those analysis and evaluation procedures to actually make sure we're designing the right thing and it's meeting the specifications and meeting the standards and is actually going to work as we expect and fulfill the needs and requirements of the customer. So there's a few different standards that are available to us, the IEEE standard or the Department of Defense standard, which helps creating logical platforms for software development and software design. And it's very useful to keep these consistent throughout our project. We don't have one person designing something one way and another person designing something the other way and having them conflict because there's issues with how those different designs interact with each other. If we keep a a common set of design parameters and a common set of design principles, it will make it easier to communicate the design principles and, and how we want things to design and what they, we actually want them to do. And of course we want to keep our major components within our system compatible. We want uh, it can be compatible with the operating systems, for example, that we're working in and with any upgrades to those operating systems and with other software that we might need to interact with or interoperate with. And so there's some tools that are available to help us in this process, both as we perform our coding, but also as we perform our testing as well. And we typically call these case tools, computer-aided software engineering tools. When I did my computer science degree many years ago, uh, we had a specific subject looking at these case tools. And they range from a UML sort of tools to uh, doing our user design and, and user case studies and things like that, through to our bug tracking and our uh, software design tracking tools to look at the progress of the system, look at what parts are working, what parts uh, are actually working well together and what bugs are in the system and need to be fixed as well. Just like in our hardware design, documentation is very important in our software design as well. It helps us fix things quickly if problems develop. It also helps us move towards designing the right thing and not designing the wrong thing and having to redesign at a later stage. It's also really important for integrating different elements together, 
both between different software elements together and making sure they've got clear interfaces between each other and we know how to use them together, but also integrating the software with the hardware as well. So typically we'll have software to track bugs, We'll have software to track different versions and revisions so that we can go back and forth between revisions and analyze things. And also any known issues that are unsolved to date and need to be fixed but haven't been fixed yet. All of these things are important for us. And we also need to make sure all the assumptions that we're making are very clear as well. For example, the minimum hardware specifications. And those hardware specifications might form uh, the specifications of our video card, for example, our processor speed. You may have memory that we've got associated with it. Or even the bandwidth and latency sort of hardware specifications that we're doing when we're communicating between different computers or different computer systems. All of these things are going to be important. And finally, we'll end with a bit of a quote from Bill Gates. And here we see it's not just the development, but also the testing that's important. He says, we've got as many testers as we have developers. The testers spend all their time testing, the developers spend half their time testing. So we're actually more of a test organization than a software organization. Something to keep in mind when we've got the risk and the temptation to say, oh yeah, we'll do the testing at the end and it'll be fine and there won't really be any bugs. It's not the case in any decent sized software system. There's always going to be bugs and they always need to be tested and there needs to be design and development towards designing this in a way to reduce the amount of bugs and make them easy to actually test in a modular fashion.